Hello. Welcome to Just the Dis. We talk about Blu-rays here. My name is Brian. And I've got the old new disc box, which means I've got some stuff to talk about. Some of this stuff I have gone through already and uh, have checked out. And some of it uh, are just pickups that I won't be able to say as much about. But let's get into this, shall we? Let's start with some Criterion Affection, Defending Your Life, one of my favorite Albert Brooks films. And uh, one that I was eagerly anticipating a Blu-ray of for uh, Criterion to put out. And this does not disappoint. Uh, this movie is one of the great afterlife movies and features a kind of schlubby dude played by Albert Brooks who crashes his car headlong into a bus in the opening scene of this movie and ends up in Judgment City, which is this sort of afterlife limbo that you go to in the world of this film. And you are put on trial, sort of, and shown scenes from your life, which are apparently really intense to watch, these flashbacks that are meant to demonstrate that you have not conquered your fear in your mortal lifetime on Earth, and thus you are not going to be allowed to move on, uh, to continue to, I don't know, to, to move into heaven or whatever it is. Um, you're not going to be allowed to because you need to have conquered your fear, and so you're sent back in another form. And they even have something called the Past Lives Pavilion, where you can see who you've been in previous lives, which is quite an entertaining and funny scene. Um, but anyway, so Albert Brooks's character is a very sort of nervous guy and a guy who looks like he's probably going to be in trouble in terms of proving that he conquered his fear. And, you know, early on we see that his lawyer guy, sort of lawyer, played by Rip Torn, who's very funny, um, is, you know, doing his best to comfort him, but it's clear from the footage that maybe it's going to be hard to prove that he's okay to go. Um, but Rip Torn is great, you know, just super funny in this. Lots of jokes about the amount of his brain that he uses because he's like sort of an evolved being, I guess. Um, and how little, you know, normal people use. Uh, so lots of funny stuff about that and just a really great world in terms of Judgment City that's created by Albert Brooks and, you know, just the sort of um, touristy nature of it is really intriguing to me. There's so much to be unpacked from it, um, but it really is just a wonderful love story at its heart. It's basically like the Brooks character meets this woman played by Meryl Streep, who is looking like she's definitely going to end up going on and, um, you know, going to the next level, if you will, because she was uh, incredibly generous and com caring and compassionate and, you know, um, overcame her fear. And so Brooks is immediately sort of nervous about spending time with her because he's starting to fall for her and he knows he's probably not going to go where she's going. And so that's part of the story, but there's a lot more to it. It's very funny and just delightful. You know, I would put it among the great afterlife movies like uh, A Matter of Life and Death, for instance, um, is a really good double bill with this, let's say, the Paul Pressburger film. Um, but this Blu-ray really scratched the itch that I hoped it would uh, in terms of what it brought. It's a new 4K digital restoration. It looks very good. Approved by Brooks. Uh, 2.0 uh, DTS HD surround. A uh, new conversation between Brooks and filmmaker uh, Robert Whitey. And that's a really great sort of what would have been a Zoom call, but it looks like they're each filming because they have like earpieces in. They're each filming their own side of the conversation. So they're sort of cutting back and forth. And that looks nice. Um, and Whitey has all kinds of good questions for him. And, uh, you know, including things like there's a conversation where Brooks is riding a tram, which there's these trams all over judgment city and this old woman is sitting behind him and she sees his hair and starts talking about her dog and how he reminds uh her of her dog and she's like have you got a while and he's like yeah and she just starts going on and on about her droning on about her dog and so why he's asking him, like why did you include that is it is it because you feel like there'll be boring pointless conversations everywhere and he's like yep i, I do believe those conversations will happen at every level of human existence and beyond. 
And I think that's a very funny and Albert Brooksy kind of thing to say. So I was into that interview. Um, there's a new interview with theologian and critic Donna Bowman about Brooks's vision of the afterlife, which is kind of a visual essay, but kind of an interview too, um, which is really neat, just the way that she analyzes different things about it. You know, like the sort of class, sort of nat- the nature of class in the movie in terms of like the kind of hotel that... Brooks goes to versus the kind of hotel that Meryl Streep's in and why is that different and you know lots of interesting stuff like that uh, there's a new program featuring excerpts from interviews conducted in 1991 with Albert Brooks actors Lee Grant and Rip Torn and that may be electronic press kit stuff I don't know but it's neat to just see them in 1991 talking about the movie with a great you know energy and nervous enthusiasm you know usually that stuff is as the movie's coming out or just after and so they don't really know what the movie is in terms of how it will be seen and accepted by the public or not. And so I kind of like to see those in-the-moment conversations uh, from the period. So very good stuff. Um, and then there's also an essay by filmmaker Ari, Ari Aster. Uh, Ari Aster is included in the booklet with an essay. Uh, this is a Region a lock disc. And um, yeah, just really excited to get a hold of it. Very, very happy to have that. One more from Criterion, Jacques Rivette's film Celine and Julie Go Boating from 1974, a cult item for many years and one that I had not seen until this Blu-ray, and I'm glad I waited because this looks great. It's a new 2K digital restoration uh, and was worth waiting for. This movie is very tricky to describe and very unique and not like too many narrative films you've ever seen. Um, I'll read the back and I'll try and give you a clue as to what it's about it says whiling away summer in paris director jacques rivette working in close collaboration with his stars and co-conspirators juliette berto and dominique laborier uh set out to rewrite the rules of cinema in the spirit of pure play movie making as anything goes romp through the labyrinths of imagination the result is one of the most exuberantly inventive and utterly enchanting films of the french new wave in which Julie Laborier, a daydreaming librarian, meets Celine Berto, an enigmatic magician, and together they become the heroines of a time-warping adventure involving a haunted house, psychotropic candy, and a murder mystery melodrama, incorporating allusions to everything from Lewis Carroll to Louis Fayad. Celine and Julie Go Boating is both one of the all-time great hangout comedies and a totally unique, enveloping cinematic dream space that delights in the endless pleasures and possibilities of stories. That's about the best I could do. Uh, I don't think I could sum it up any better than that. Uh, It's definitely one that surprises you. And because it is so unconventional and because it is 193 minutes long, over three hours, it is really unexpected a lot of the time. And that's a great feeling. And the energy and the friendship that these two women have is really delightful and a joy to watch. So it's definitely recommended. Um, this has an audio commentary from 2017 featuring critic Adrian Martin. It has Jacques Rivette Le Valère, a 1994 two-part feature documentary by Claire Denis, featuring an extensive interview with Rivette by film critic Serge Daney, new interviews with actor Bull Ogier and producer and actor Barbe Schroeder. I forgot he was a producer on this. Um, new conversation between critic Pacome element and Helen Frappe, author of Jacques Rivette, Secret Compris, archival interviews with Rivette, Ogier, and actors Julie Ber- Juliette Berto, Dominique Laborier, and Marie France Pizer, a new English subtitle translation, and an essay in the booklet. That's what that looks like. And in case I forgot to show the inside, Defending Your Life. Okay, so those are a couple from Criterion. Next up, we have one from Synapse Films. This is Running Time, a Josh Becker film from 1998, I believe. Um, And it stars the great Bruce Campbell. There is some alternate artwork I will show you on the inside. There's the disc. And there's the traditional artwork you will see. I like the flipped myself a little better. So... Running Time. This is one of those 
kind of gimmicky movies in that it's, um, well, it says inspired by Alfred Hitchcock's rope and filmed over 20 uh, years before Sam Mendes' 1917. Writer-director Josh Becker designed running time to play out using the one continuous shot technique with no computer-assisted trickery, expertly photographed and edited on film to take place over 70 minutes of real time this gritty crime drama was shot entirely on location in the streets of Los Angeles. And um, it's pretty cool. Basically, Bruce Campbell plays this guy who uh, is just getting out of jail. And he launches a full-scale heist to steal mob money from the prison laundry, uh, the prison that just released him. With the help of an old friend, uh, Jeremy Roberts, from People Under the Stairs, a driver and a safecracker, Carl's attempt to carry out the robbery is fraught with incompetence and bad luck. I won't go too much further than that, but yeah. So it's like he gets out of jail, his buddy picks him up, uh, he takes him to a prostitute, and then they're off to go and rob this uh, laundry. And we never upcut time at all. There are those classic zoom into the back or front of somebody to cover a cut. Um, so there's a few of those. There's a lot of really long takes, a lot of, you know, time playing out in real time. And, and it, you, I'll be honest, you start to feel it at certain points, even in a 70 minute movie, but it's still really, really well put together. And Campbell is great. I love him as this character. I just love him in general. Um, and there's some genuine heart to it, which I didn't remember at all. I hadn't seen this for a long time. I feel like I saw it on DVD maybe when it came out. I don't remember how I saw it, but um, I was intrigued by it and it was intriguing to watch it again. Uh, so this is an all new 2K scan and rest restoration from the original camera negative and it looks good. Um, it's presented for the first time on video with the original theatrical stereo mix. I want to say it's 137 to 1. I can't remember if there's a widescreen version you can watch, if there's two versions. Um, but I think it's just the, it's definitely the the um, square version for sure. And this is all region, by the way. Um, but so then it has an audio commentary with writer-director Josh Becker and star Bruce Campbell. Uh, Run and Gun with Bruce Campbell, an all-new interview, 22 minutes. Uh, Q&A from the Freaky Film Festival premiere at the University of Illinois. That's uh, Josh Becker and Bruce Campbell basically sitting at the front of a classroom and it's fun. It's very low key video, um, very relaxed, chill atmosphere in the Q and a, and it's enjoyable. Uh, so good disc and a fun, you know, single take thriller, uh, if you will, uh, from Josh Becker, who is a, an associate of Sam Raimi's and, you know, you get a sense of some of that energy here. Um, let's hope this also means that maybe Lunatics, a love story will get a Blu-ray. There's a DVD from, uh, Umbrella Entertainment in Australia, but there's no Blu-ray for that. And that is also Josh Becker and my favorite Josh Becker film. And so I do hope somebody picks that up for Blu-ray as well, but that was fun running time. Next, this one is a pickup. Hold on a second. Um, uh, just covering up the cover there. A, um, a, I think this is an import. I forget where from. Uh, might be Italian. Oh, no, it's German, I think. Um, and it's Delamore, Delamorte, Cemetery Man. And um, it is Michele Suave. And it is the story of this guy who works in a cemetery and he's constantly having to deal with the... Um, the residents coming back to life. And anyway, I don't want to talk about that one too much because uh, this is kind of a, a classic of sorts. Uh, this is an all region and it has 3d as well, which I find intriguing. Um, I got this from diabolic DVD. Uh, it is sold out now, but I do recommend putting your name or your email into the wish list for it because um, it looks pretty good. Like I, I checked it out and I think there's another import of this you can get, but this one looked pretty good to me. So I would say go sign up at Diabolic to get yourself uh, a copy of Cemetery Man on Blu-ray. And um, next we have The Bad News Bears. 
I have talked about this previously on the channel with the imprint films version of the Bad News Bears. This is the Paramount Pictures version, uh, stateside. Uh, I don't see any region locking on this. It may be all region. Um, but this version has some new extras, which are pretty cool. And I got to say, I kind of love them. So you have, uh, I want to say about an 11 or 12 minute interview with Kevin Smith talking about, you know, the Bad News Bears and how it affected him when he saw it as a kid. You have Life Imitates Art, Jackie O'Haley talking about the movie. That's about eight minutes, which is great. He talks about casting. He talks about Walter Matthau. He talks about just general memories from the set and how Kelly Leak is a sort of a big deal character in his life because he feels like, you know, Kelly maybe shaped him as a person more than he shaped Kelly, which I thought was an interesting thing to say. Um, and there's also uh, three minutes of Jackie Earl Haley's home movies shot on Super 8, um, and that's kind of cool too. He does a little intro for that part. But then you have uh, an interview, another about eight minutes. It's about 30 minutes or so of features with all of them, um, and that's with producer Stanley Jaffe. And I liked his interview as well. He's talking about hiring Michael Ritchie, having seen uh, Downhill Racer and thinking it's one of the best sports movies ever made but also having seen like Smile the year before and how well Michael Ritchie worked with, I think, young people and large groups. And that's what was required here. And he did a great job. This is one of the great American films of the 1970s. And Michael Ritchie absolutely destroys with this film. And it's still one of the best, you know, sports movies ever. Just a great um, underdog story. And Mathau is fantastic. And so is Vic Morrow. And, of course, uh, so is young Tatum O'Neill and the whole team. I just love it. Um, I can't really tell if there's a difference between this transfer and the one you're getting on the imprint films disc, but I think I might prefer the extras here uh, in this release. And it is a little cheaper. It's about $15 bucks, uh, at a regular price on Amazon. I'll leave a link below. You can pick it up if you're interested. But great to have this on Blu-ray in now two editions. Next up we have a goofy one that I just pulled out and watched, so I wanted to include it, and that is Skate Town USA. One of two roller disco movies. In fact, there might be more, but the two big ones are this one and Roller Boogie, which I am a huge fan of. I may slightly prefer Ro Roller Boogie to this, and I know there are a lot of people that think Skate Town USA is the one, um, and it is pretty great. Uh, it is super cheesy and has a great soundtrack you can see all the folks mentioned in the soundtrack here and i don't even know if the soundtrack is intact from its original theatrical release which is part of the reason this movie wasn't available for a long time you know just like the wildlife and other movies along those lines but what's there is pretty great there's a lot of high profile songs still here and the transfer looks really good and for a movie that was basically unavailable i don't think even had a vhs release officially uh, it's incredible to have a nice Blu-ray of Skate Town USA, even if there are no extra features. Uh, it was a blast to watch this. Um, Patrick Swayze is in it as the leader of this skating gang. Um, and there's some great skate-offs, and Swayze does his own skating, and he's really good. Uh, it's like stunt work, and there's like musical numbers, and it's just silly and so much fun. Um, the cast includes Ruth Buzzy, uh, Scott Bayo, and I'm trying to think who, I can't remember this main guy's name, but he's also in Love Lines, which I really like. Um, the back says, the owner of a roller disco emporium on the pier at Santa Monica, California, is nervously awaiting the start of his establishment's first annual roller disco contest as the evening progresses. Professionals give exhibition performances, zany patrons swarm the area, and angry citizens committee uh, serves to drive the owner crazy. Um, yeah, that's a decent summation, but this is kind of like, you know, one of those crazy one-night movies. Uh, I'm thinking, like, thank God it's Friday, but with roller disco and better. Um, anyway, just had to mention this one because it's crazy to me that this is on Blu-ray. And I love it. It's a blast. Skate Town, USA. 
Next up, this is a pickup. Um, I know screenwriter and trailers from hell dude uh, Josh Olson is a big fan of this one. And uh, I had watched it, but it had been a while. And so I was revisiting it. And uh, it's fun. It's a weird one from 1980. And it's about, um, well, it says inspired by the Sierra McFadden novel, uh, Serial A Year in the Life of Mar- Marin County. Um, Serial, Serial, uh, Serial is director Bill Persky's satirical look at the lifestyles of California's 1970s hippie culture. Uh, viewed through the eyes of Harvey H- Holroyd, uh, Martin Moe, a man perplexed by the behavior of his wife, Kate, Tuesday Weld, and their liberal-minded friends, uh, you have, let's see here, uh, serial lampoons, everything from feminism, free love, and, <laughs> let's see here, sexual politics to cults, motorcycle clubs, and the random midlife crisis. The gift and ensemble includes Sally Kellerman, Christopher Lee, Bill Macy, Nina Talbot, Tom Smothers, Pamela Bellwood, and more. Um, it's it's interesting. It's a really interesting, you know, satire. You can definitely feel the kind of satire they were doing in the late seventies, uh, and you know how it's you know it is dated certainly, but there's definitely some very funny stuff about this tonally. It's just got an absurdist uh, vibe to it that I don't know if it fully maintains in a way I would love, but it does have some wonderful, absurd moments. And just depicting the lifestyle in California, whether it's from the late 70s or 2021, as a Midwest transplant to California, I'm always amused by that sort of stuff. You know, how true to life is it or not? Um, it's always amused me. And and the, this is the kind of movie that gave me my impressions of California before I moved here um, a long time ago. Anyway, it's a fun one. It's available uh, from Olive Films, and uh, it's an older Blu-ray, but let's see here. I got a DVD here in the mix. Um, Garden Tool Massacre. This is a shot on video uh, movie from SRS Video. This is my first SRS purchase. Uh, there are a couple other channels I think talk about these guys, and um, I never heard of them. I, I wish I could remember the channel that I saw this one recommended on, but I cannot. Uh, but I've always been curious about Garden Tool Massacre. It's an ultra-rare 1990s SOV movie, never before released in the USA officially, and only a handful of copies direct from the filmmaker exist anywhere. Uh, It says, On the 23rd of August, 1990, psychopath Charles Scavellini brutally murdered and mutilated his adulterous wife. Seven years later, after brutally slaying a hospital orderly and a doctor, Scavellini escapes the mental institution and returns to his home now occupied by a gang of partying teenagers scavellini takes back his property with brutal bloodlust dispatching each teenager with garden implements so it is exactly what it says it is um interestingly this looks like it's going to be well it is a press disc which is great um but it also um i thought it might be a burn but it also has an audio commentary from the director so very curious to hear director's thoughts on this when I do get a chance to watch it. So that is Garden Tool Massacre on DVD. And last but not least, this is just a pickup, but I wanted to mention it because I am definitely curious to watch it. Uh, this is a double feature from Arrow Video. The Invisible Man Appears and The Invisible Man versus The Human Fly. And these are from... Uh, let's see here. I want to say these are from the 50s, 49 and 57, maybe. Uh, it says, finally released outside Japan for the very first time, these unique riffs on H.G. Wells's classic character, though undoubtedly also indebted to Universal's iconic film series, are two of the earliest examples of tokusatsu special effects uh, cinema from Dai Studios, later home of Gamera. So I guess this is pre-Gamera filmmaking from the same studio. It says, In the Invisible Man Appears, written and directed by Nobu Adachi in 1949, a scientist successfully creates an invisibility serum only to be kidnapped by a gang of thugs who wish to use the formula to rob a priceless jewel. In addition to being the earliest surviving Japanese science fiction film ever made, 
The film's entertaining special effects are and were an early credit for the legendary uh, I.G. Subarara uh, five years before he first brought Godzilla to life. Uh, eight years later, Mitsuo Muroyama's exciting uh, Invisible Man versus the Human Fly tells the story of a series of mysterious murders where only, the only clue is a strange buzzing noise at the scene of the crime. Could this be linked to the secret wartime experiments in shrinking humans to the size of insects? And can scientists who's just invented uh, can a scientist who's just invented an invisibility ray be the one to stop it? Very intrigued by these. I've always been fascinated by Invisible Man films. I love the entire series that they did for Universal. Even the sequels, they're all kind of fun to me. I love Carpenter's Invisible Man movie, so I'm just into them. Um, this has high-definition transfers of both films, original lossless Japanese mono audio on both films, optional English subtitles for both, Transparent Terrors, a newly filmed interview with critic and genre scholar Kim Newman on the history of the Invisible Man in cinema. Very excited about that. Can't wait to watch that. Um, theatrical trailer for Invisible Man appears, and that is about it. Um, but regardless, in Arrow I Trust, uh, so I'm going to be very curious to check out these Invisible Man movies. Uh, but that is it for this round of my collection update. Uh, hopefully there's some stuff in here for you to enjoy, check out, pre-order, buy, or decide not to buy. Um, anyway, let me know what you've picked up recently in the comments below, and if you like this kind of video, please like it and subscribe to the channel if you could. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.